In a world of magic and mystery, one elf woman fights crime and the forces of evil in her own unconventional way. These are The Misadventures of Agneta Deveau. Episode 12, Ghosts of Villains Past. Written by Royce Pentagast. Michelle, I think we need to get to know each other a bit more. Agreed. Everything has just been so quick. It has. I mean, you were using a pseudonym most of the time we've known each other. Exactly. I mean, like, were you Lady Michelle? But is it Michelle Grantham or... So, what do you want to know first? Or, uh, uh, what do you get up to? Well, let's see. Given my family standing, I spend a lot of time learning and fulfilling the responsibilities of Lady of the Manor. Usually the sort of stuff Dad can't be bothered with. For hobbies, sword fighting has to be my main passion. Our group quickly proved that women were more than capable in the sport. And it does have its practical uses. Oi! Stand and deliver! You picked the wrong carriage, fool! Oh, bugger! Yeah! I do some art, some sewing... Oh, and I am in a group of lady mathematicians. This last year, we've been working on an automaton... But I won't bore you with the details. Got it. It should be working now. The compressor was restricting movement, but I bypassed the compressor. Would you care for some tea? Hang on, what? But it's not much, really. What about you? Well, I don't know if I can compete with that. No, it's not about competition. You must do something, though. Well, for me, this work is the sort of thing I do to cure boredom. Bit of monster hunting here and there, crime fighting, specialising in murders. The victim was killed by a stab to the scapula. Mr. Vo, this man has been strangled. Yeah, well, that's knackered that idea then. And I mean, to think this all started because I was doing pest control. The office of Bertie Harrison in there, he's sort of a rival of mine. Have you ever seen those bee swarms collected signs around town? Those are his. Bit of a weird hobby, but then again, I collect coins, so who am I to judge? And yet, uh, that's a wasp nest you have in that shoebox, not a beehive. I know. Got this, Bertie, you twit. You truly are bizarre. <laughs> People in this country use that word a lot. I can never tell if it's good or bad. It's good. I like bizarre. If you're talking bizarre, she's definitely it. Fancy another drink? Yes, please. Sure thing. I've just got to go south and path and... What? And yet, uh, that doesn't mean what you think it means. Oh, I know. Just used to say it to test people. Kind of grew on me, but, you know. Back in a mall. Don't fall in! So, you sew? I do. I made this coat. Ah, oh, lovely. I did this dress. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking at that stitching. It's great. Yeah, I did that by hand. You're kidding. Not at all. Well, a little, but mostly by hand. Do you have a machine? Nah, I don't have a sewing machine. Do you want one? I have a spare you could have. Oh no, I I couldn't. I insist. If you'd like one, it's no problem. That's too kind. Thank you. Ah, hello. Hello there. Michelle said she can get me a new sewing machine. Oh wow, that's cool. I didn't know you sewed. I've always sewed. I sewed this dress. It's just we're usually talking about something or someone else. It's not a topic of conversation for us. Well, if you ever need to talk about sewing, lay it on me. I don't suppose you're into sword fighting? Funnily enough, I used to do a bit of fencing. There's a guy who works here, Russ. He does the music on the weekends. He's really into sword fighting. I recommend staying clear of him. He has very strange ideas about women in the sport. And women in general. I don't know why I keep him around, but I guess every court needs its jester. But I've taken up the crossbow since. Anyway, you want a drink, Termel? Yes, please. So, Michelle, um, how's it been with Agnetta? Good. Really, really good. I saw a story about you in the papers earlier. I think they misspelled your surname somehow. Is it spelled... You know what? I'm thick. I went all that time and forgot to ask the really important questions about that demon. Hey? He's gone for good, banished from the beyond, but I never figured out after all this time what his motives were. Why did he get that mage to create the Red Fog? Why did he create the Tattered Jackanapes and free Anthony Castle from his cell? And more importantly... 
Why does a spirit need a revenue stream? Well, that's a good point. I guess you'll never know now. Now he's gone for good. What do you mean, revenue stream? The demon was behind the Gordon Goodbrad religious retreat, funneling their fortunes somehow. That sounds like something he did when he was alive. Really? Oh, wait, you knew him. What do you know about him? Well, I didn't know him, really. He was my dad's friend and mentor. You'd have to ask him. Now, that does sound like an amusing setup for conflict. No, I mean it. He might be difficult, but he's not unreasonable. He's trying to get back in my good books, so I guess if he wanted that, he would be able to answer a few questions. Answering questions isn't enough. No matter how honest people think they're being, there's always something of a bias in their words. And even then, recollection is spot at best. What we need is some way to get into his mind and see the memories as they really happen. Hmm, I know, just the person to ask. Agneta and Tomel made their way to the city library, hoping to find the person who could help them in their investigation. The white witch, Trina, with her memory exploring powers. Here she is, Trina. Agneta Devon, it's good to see you. This is Tomel, Tomel, Trina. Did you get a job here or something? I did. Something to keep me busy. Can I help you find something? I need a favour from you. I'm going to interview a suspect in a case and I don't trust him to tell the truth. Oh, with that, I can help you. I'm ready now. Sweet. Now, we need some muscle to back us up. Why? Better safe than sorry. I might know a place. Come along. To a tavern on the edge of town, the three found the man in question, Agneta's old friend and partner in crime, Harry Dorian. Fraulein, I believe we met once in my dream. No, don't go. Well, maybe that accent does not bring the babes. Harry, I need your help. Agneta and Tamel, what a pleasant surprise. And someone new, a white witch of the rancorous wastes. Charm to meet you. Oh, stop it. I'm in need of backup. I have a feeling some interview I'm doing could get airy. You in? If you need backup, you want someone stronger than that. The group turned to see a familiar face, the elven rogue Neris, with whom Agneta had teamed up with weeks prior to deal with a dangerous foe. Name's Neris. You can call me Neris. Here for whatever you need, no matter what it is. Well, that's funny. That was a slogan of Agneta's for a time. All in one, whatever you need. We are not alike. I'm not saying you were. Good grief, Tamel, and you call yourself a progressive, saying all elves are alike. No, I have that have thought about it, and Agneta and I are actually pretty similar. So I say we should embrace that and stop this little rivalry we have. It's the kind of thing the man is using to try and keep us down. What? Yes, Agneta, women are forever pitted against one another in issues trivial and petty. We should celebrate our similarities. And our differences for the benefit of all. Right, yeah, I can get beyond that. It is appropriate for our mission then, yes? For us all to team up and take down this man. <laughs> exactly, you ladies must force your way, forwards and upwards, with me following you. Please don't finish that. Tamel, it's a shame you think so little of me. Anyway, who is the talk? There is no target, but the task is to interview my dad, Lord Grantham. He's your dad? I am so sorry to hear that. I've called ahead to let him know, and he's agreed to meet with us. I don't think he knows you've brought quite a team to deal with this. Why's Charlotte got a crossbow? And yet it told me to be prepared. Prepared for what? She didn't say. I have a bad feeling about this. Last time Trina and I went digging around in memories, we accidentally unlocked a demon hidden in her mind. It could be possible as we go into your dad's we might find the same. Better a team to take down a possible threat than be ill-prepared. Now I have a bad feeling about this. The party, made up of Agneta, Tomel, Charlotte, Michelle, Trina, Harry and Neris, made their way to the Grantham estate, this time through the front door to the foyer, where they were shown through to the drawing room by the butler Croft. Your daughter and her friends have arrived, my lord. Good God, you said a few people. Not an army. They're here in case something happens, Dad. It's nothing to worry about. In case something happens? Why, is there a sniper trained on me from across the field or something? Oh, yes. Do come in. Make yourself at home. Uh, very gladly. Thank you for the offer. Lord Grantham, I know our past interactions have been 
troubled, to say the least. Yes, I would describe you punching me in the testicles, twice, as being troubled. There was some twisting involved that first time. Yes, that I'm trying to forget. I'm here today because your life could be in danger, and I believe you might have the information we need. Ah, Croft. Good man. You have the tea. We have extra cups for your daughter's guests. Will you be needing anything else? No, thank you. You may let this be. So, what is this information? Information on Dave Maloney. (coughs) You knew him. I did. He was my mentor. I believe you said your career went back some 40 years or so? Stopped just short of 41. Yes. What is this about Dave Maloney? Five years ago he died. But this last year he's lived on as something called a malignant spirit. Where he wreaked havoc on our world from the Red Fog to the escape of murderer Anthony James Castle. Look, this is ridiculous. I know the world of ghosts and all that is real. And I know in order to be a ghost you need to be a mage, which Maloney wasn't. Not always. Sometimes all you need is a strong connection to the spirit world, and a lot of the time people never realise that they have it. Well, I don't believe you. Allow me to show you, Mr. Grantham. What are you doing? Who are you? I'm Drina, and I can read memories. This is Anyata's memory. Is this the man you once knew? Your meddling has ruined my revenue stream. I didn't have anything to do with the birds. The birds were my doing. My magic summoned the creatures in the yes. to destroy what air That is it. Good. Covered. Now we're getting As somewhere. While he did come back, he's since been banished and now is effectively dead once more. There are some questions that we still haven't answered, so maybe you can help us with that. When did you first meet him? Gosh, hmm. I was 16 years old and I went to this sort of job fair where all the political parties were there recruiting people, at my father's insistence. Well, I think it was, anyway. <laughs> Hang on. What are you doing? Before them appeared a scene from Grantham's memory, a recruitment fair 41 years ago, where a young and disinterested Grantham strolled the hall. Trina is here to help you remember. She'd better not go looking where she shouldn't. I am mostly imprecise with my operation. Mostly precise? How encouraging. Look at that! I think I could see my mum in there. She was always fighting the good fight. What happened when you first met Dave Maloney? Well, I guess I first saw him give a speech. On behalf of the organisers of this event, I extend a warm welcome to you all, as you take your first steps into the world of politics. No matter what party you choose, no matter your aspirations, I hope we all work towards making this country better. Truthfully, I didn't think much of him then. It was later at lunch, something strange happened. Hello. Is this seat taken? No, it's free. Thank you. How are you finding the fair? Fine. You're David Wood Maloney. That is me. Good to meet you too, Peter Grantham. I saw you on stage earlier. I've heard about you. I am sure I shall be hearing about you in future. Have you made a decision about which direction you should take? Um, I have some options. It can be daunting to choose a path you feel you must commit to. Many people try different options before they find the party they truly identify with. Some people feel compelled by the demands of their peers or parents to go with the one they feel they should, rather than the one they feel they should. Perhaps you should think on that, Mr. Grant. He sat with you for lunch. Why? I don't know. I guess I found it strange then, but I forgot. What happened next? I think I must have seen him the week after. In his office, after a tour of Parliament House. Well, I chose your party because it was the one in government. It seemed the obvious choice. For someone who is looking to get a head start in politics, it is a good decision. I am a little concerned about people saying the party is full of bigots, which had me thinking about you. You're from the Morn, yes? So it can't be? You're right to be concerned. Associating with people like that could be damaging to one's reputation. It is lucky, then, we are not. Too often are people caught up in the trivialities of politics to look at the big picture. And what's that? The smooth operation of a country. And depending upon how well you achieve that, there are significant monetary benefits as well. Your family are old money, yes. Materially, theoretically, you are wealthy. But that is wealth tied to lineage. It's not your own. I come from a poor archipelago on the south of Morn. When I arrived here, My family had barely five pounds to our name. Now, having worked here ten years, I am worth 1.3 million. Good gosh, that's more than my family is worth. 
Indeed, imagine the wealth you could make with us in making this country the best it could be. They're still using that kind of rhetoric today. It's all empty promises. I'll tell you what's changed. It's your stance on bigotry. What, is he feeding us lies or something through his imaginings? No, this is the truth. But I found a memory that might give us answers. Oh no, this was quite a while later, this memory. So what's going on down there? The civil rights movement has extended into Harrington. They often say this country is a good few decades behind the rest of the world. Human protesters oppose the raising of wages to non-humans, as construction from dwarven companies increases their reach across the city. Humans? Sounds weird to be referred to as that. Not language I would use. But these people have a way with words that succeed in creating a divide between us and them. These people are rallying with our party. This isn't going to look good. When we have the majority, the opinions of the minority do not matter. Are you not concerned about this? If this goes further, it could be people like you they're calling for to be thrown out. I'm not worried. We control the narrative. We could use this anger to our benefit. How? Well, we could appeal to their demands. Or we could ignore them. The demands are a protest to the increase in wage for elves. They don't want them only the same as they are. If we shoot down this bill, we would incite anger in the other side. Workers will go on strike. What if we were to find a compromise and limit the raise? Allow the increase, but still keep it lower. 70 pence to the pound is better than 40 to 1. Are you suggesting we manipulate the system? Well, it's the kind of thing you and the others would suggest. Do you think it would work? This is strange. What's wrong? Thinking about it like this, looking in from the outside, it feels different. Something else is coming through. The process is very simple. We appeal to the values of our voters without ever directly aligning themselves with them. Claim it's, Claim all, it's all caught up, up in Parliament. In Parliament some, some terminology the common man doesn't common man fully doesn't understand. understand. We make deals with companies to conduct their business here for a price, silently buying into their businesses and reaping the rewards. We favour the human businesses because under the government, as it stands, they bring in the most money, and that keeps the stream flowing. People may claim bigotry and let them think that with vague dismissals. If the tide changes, so do we. The money doesn't stop. No wonder this country's in trouble. The people in charge weren't ruling, but investing. And they were all outed in that report a few months ago. Is there no end to this corruption? Of course not. It's all about the money. People like you and Peter Dominic's entering for causes they believe in. You all seem mad to the rest of them. Huh. Peter Dominic's. Peter Grantham. That's weird. Super common names here. Either that or someone got lazy. Seeing all of this now, it can't be real. This is all in your mind, Mr. Grantham. More true than any words you have spoken. All this? The entire friendship with the man? Was him using me to make more money? Did he single me out for my family's wealth? Make me feel special? Engineer our friendship? Was I just a tool? You were a massive tool, Grantham, in his plot. Persuasion, coercion, manipulation, then possession. But he's dead now. He were a ghost. Why was he doing what he did? What was he doing? Apparently, he had some hand in the Gordon Goodbright religious retreat on Mount Liffey. Yes, that was one of his last ventures before he died, five years ago. The Red Fog? He said when we first met, such a thing in his days would have led to majors in stocks. Yes, well, kind of. The party had been leaning into a vague anti-mage stance for a little while. Weeks before the election, that would have seen you re-elected. Only for a mage to put an end to it and save the day. I was impressed even then. Aw, thank you. Anyway, the Crimson Dick Bag, that guy you possessed to slash people up around the canals, what was that for? Well, it's just a guess, but any place to be hit by a sudden crime wave would devalue the property in the area. Land around the canals remains incredibly pricey, and the tattered jack and ape slashings were never widely reported enough to drive the value down. Gosh, the village of Pimbello, where that murderer struck, that had become one of the most expensive and desirable places to live north of the city. Property prices have since tanked and companies that Maloney and you, Grantham, were involved in have started to move in and seize land for the cheap. Well, I didn't do that. But who did? 
But the demon said he released the killer to distract me and bring me away from the city. He was working on something else. In our final confrontation, he'd amassed enough power to reach through to our world and directly interact with. Had he gone further, he could have passed through completely. And now I have. Grantham stood, stiffer than usual, and straightened his tie. Your little spell almost did the job, but lucky I still had a hand in this world to pull myself back. Years of work was not for nothing, as I feared, and now what better a time and place to make my grand return? Hold on one moment. What I change is something more fitting. That's better. Dad? It's Maloney. First it was persuasion and coercion, manipulation, then possession. Now, literally. Your father is gone. gone. His body, body now a vessel, vessel for me to inhabit. inhabit. His, His usefulness had run its run course. course. His competency His proved non-existent without me there to guide, to guide him. Leading to his and your first meeting, Mr. Bow. Let him go now. Get out of him. Michelle, be careful! Why? He's useful now, which means I have more incentive to keep him alive. The demon in Grantham's body conjured a sword from thin air, driving Michelle back with a few sharp blows. Now the gate is open. Time to let some friends through. I trust you shall find them entertaining. From behind him, all manner of monsters poured into the room, armored knights and six-legged spiny tigers, shambling men and toothy beasts. Look out! Harry, take the gas! Charlotte, move back and fire on the ogres! Neris, stop those wraiths from getting out the room! What are you doing? Those are shades! The ones at the door, they're the wraiths! Yes, Neris, do keep up. It's almost like you know nothing about demons. Bite me! Ooh, promises, promises. A horde of charred black skeleton warriors piled onto Anietta, only for them to let go as Trina, wielding her magic from across the room, compelled the soldiers to turn on their demonic allies. <clears throat> A demon <clears throat> ran forward to bring his war axes down on Trina, only for it to pass through. Only an apparition of her form, as the real Trina cut the same demon down from behind. My lord, what is this racket? Uh, I'll come back later when you're free. I learned a great many things while in the beyond. What is possible is constrained only by the limits of your imagination. And I imagined a world where I could return, with the wealth to sustain me for years I was robbed. I don't care about your reasons. Michelle, careful. That's still your father's body. If you arm Maloney, you'll arm Grantham. I could not have chosen a better shield. Or could you strike down your father to destroy me once and for all? I know when yet or suddenly. How do I get you out of there? You can't. This is my body now until I see fit to be done with it. He was not my first choice, but we have to make do with what we have. He's lying. You can get him out. You just need to displace the spirit and- Agneta was cut off as the demon continued his attack on Michelle. She dodged and parried each blow, unable to land a strike on him. Meanwhile, a familiar skeleton in a crown of horns, engulfed in purple flame, approached Agneta, twin sabers in hand. You and I have unfinished business, Mr. Vo. Didn't I cut you in half last week? Can't get more finished than that. You can try to kill me, but I always survive. Now you will suffer. You know, this reminds me of Kogosland. You and I remember that very differently. Aha! Charlotte, I shall come to your rescue. Yes, please. And hurry! Michelle, overwhelm the spirit! How? A feeling so powerful that it impacts your dad's body so much that he breaks through and casts Maloney out. Pain! Something painful! Like what? This is a battle you cannot win. Cause pain to release your father. How much pain do you think he can take? Do you believe your weak frame could even inflict that level of pain? <laughs> I thought you smarter than that. It's the kind of language we use to manipulate the masses in politics. You're quick to anger and your blows become less focused. And I thought you smarter than that. That's a diversion to make you feel confident and underestimate your opponent. With a jab and a swing, Michelle smacked the sword from the demon's hand, running straight at him. Sorry, Dad. And punching him right in the groin. <sighs> the demon's spirit was cast out from her father's body. As the two men doubled over in pain, the demon losing color in his form as he turned to smoke. 
I think you should stay down, mate, or I'll kick ya. His spirit form is still solid enough to do that. And me. I want to kick him too. Too right. You are getting the hang of this thing, Charlotte. What makes you think I can't come back? You return for a hook in the minds of your victims. And I can erase that hook so you can never return. In fact, I already have. So, all that's left is this. Dares Kai Mordorel! I name the spirit Dave Maloney. And with that, the demon was gone for good. Michelle was by her father's side, who was still curled up in pain. Sorry about that, but at least it worked. Smart thinking there, Michelle. The kind of pain you knew your father could handle, but Demon Dave couldn't. In a way, you should thank me, Grantham, for training you to deal with that pain. Get out of my house, all of you, please. Thank you, but go. Right you are. Come on, you lot, let's get going. Do you think you could heal him with your magic? Yes, please. Do that and piss off. Ah, oh, I think I threw my shoulder out towards the end. Ran out of crossbow bolts and had to resort to hitting him. I had hoped for more backup, but it was starting to feel a bit indulgent. But back and shoulder pain, I can heal them no problem. Worst design things in the human body, made to fail. And yet, uh, is the demon gone for good? He's as dead as he was the first time he died. Just without coming back as a malignant spirit thing, so even deader. To think, if I'd stopped you launching a groinal assault on Grantham all those years ago, we might not have lived to win this fight. I miss the days where you weren't storing felons in my freezer. You know, we were talking about getting to know one another. I don't actually know. Is Grantham your surname too? It's not. Then what's your name? It's Michelle. Michelle. The Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe, starring... Liz Corrick as Agneta. Jennifer Fink as Lady Michelle. Royce Pendergast as Termel. Skylar Bow as Charlotte. Mara Blackledge as Neris. Gedlero Estrina. Jake T. Hodgetts as Harry Dorian. Stuart Fulton as Grantham. And Michael Mengada as the narrator. Theme music composed by Matt Harris. Additional music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Produced by City Park Radio 2022.